Welcome to Faith on Film with Isaac Hernandez and Holly McClure. Keeping you informed on faith and family entertainment. Hi, Holly. We've got a wonderful show today. We do, Isaac. Hi. I mean, I'm actually excited about this show because you and I have seen the movie Sound of Freedom and we both loved it mm-hmm. and at the same time couldn't wait to get an interview on it and who do we have that we're interviewing today isaac well we're going to be interviewing the director now i have to i have to clarify here that it and was who actually was he? The it director was actually was... well hold, hold on here it was actually a little tough for me to watch the movie because of the subject matter it, it, it deals with child trafficking and so it just became difficult but again like you said it was a great movie and it's one that everybody should go see Take your teens, not your little children, but certainly uh, your mature teens to, to see this movie. But the director, Alejandro, I love saying this, Alejandro Monteverde. Well, that's what I was trying to get you to say. <laughs> because he, he is, um, you know, he has been involved with other movies. He's made yes. the movie Little Boy, um, Bella, with his partner, Eduardo Verastegui. Yes. So they both have partnered and done films before. But he directed and co-wrote this. And folks, this is an important movie. And yes. like Isaac said, you may feel like, oh, I can't go watch that. It's about child trafficking. Don't. It. No, it's not that. It won't offend you. Mm-hmm. It'll make you a very aware. And you'll walk out of there going, I want to do something about this. And with the recent border situation, the recent situation, you know, come to light about children being trafficked across the border, as well as in other ways, working in sweatshops right now in America. Is this going on in America, folks? It's not out in another country. More than ever, this is an important, important movie to go see. Important movie to share with your family. Important movie to share with your coworkers, your church friends. We're, we can't emphasize enough. You need to support Sound of Freedom. Well, let's take a look at the trailer. And then when we come back, we're going to be talking with Alejandro Monteverde. How that make you feel? Giving a child his freedom. Good. You have been at this for 12 years. My country tis of thee. Why are you doing it? Sweet land of liberty. Because God's children are not for sale. It is the fastest growing international crime network that the world has ever seen. For Homeland Security, you know we can't go off rescuing Honduran kids in Colombia. This job tears you to pieces. And, my and this is my one chance to put those pieces back together. And, and yet somehow, you have failed to bring me one real world lead. It's over, Tim. Close up and come back home. So you quit your job and you go and rescue those kids. South of that river is all rebel territory. No one goes in. What if this was your daughter? So she's gone. that that's the sound of freedom Alejandro welcome to faith on film thank you thank you thank you for having me here it's good to have you here we um, saw this film and it is Amazing. This is one of the most uh, intense, but needs to be done message and film, The Sound of Freedom, that um, I've seen in a long time. And, you know, I followed your work because, um, you know, with Little Boy and Bella and work that you've done before, I've loved the films you've done before, touching films. This is a very different uh, kind of film for you to do. You've directed it and you co-wrote it, correct? Yes, correct. 
Now, yeah, it's been. Go ahead. No, no, no. It's been it's been a, a journey in itself. Because getting into it, you had to work with Tim Ballard on his story, and for co-writing this, um, was it difficult to write these kind of scenes and write this kind of story? Because it is an intense story. Yeah, it was very, very difficult in the beginning, especially. And then because everything was new, the whole world, the whole level of darkness was very difficult to digest. But at the same time, there was a revelation because I understood clearly that the kind of movie I had to make, it had to be in a certain way beautiful executed so the audience could digest it. So that's when I started kind of visualizing the film into an e thinking that every shot, this is a battle between light and darkness, every shot had to have, in a way, a, a, a light piercing that darkness. And light, I knew, was going to be a character in the film and on this story. You, you now, know, um, um, I was going to say, since you mentioned the darkness, first of all, I love the movie, and I think everybody needs to go see it. But being a, a father of three and a grandfather of seven myself, I found it sometimes very difficult and just uh, very unnerving to watch, um, specifically in this one scene where the, the door to the hotel room opens and you see the, the gentleman walking in and you see a little girl sitting in the bed. That just was so difficult. How, how was it for you to, to actually be directing these scenes? Uh, I mean, I know it's a movie, but uh, did it affect you in some way? Yeah, of course. And I was very, very careful into figuring out how to, it's like a, I play a lot of chess. It's how to make a move in the story without crossing any lines. You know, the movie got a PG-13 rating. So it is, it, is, it, is, it is a film that proposes the theme without going into yes. the darkness. I you know, if, if you look at the, that scene that you're mentioning, all you see is him ending into yep. the room and then the curtains close. And that's as much as you're going to see. Absolutely. And obviously, when you put it in your head, <laughs> that's when it becomes challenging. But... It, it we we were very careful into how to put this because we also didn't want to go and make it a very plasticky and not you know kind of like the disney version you know we wanted to at least for people to understand if, if it's uncomfortable for you to see it just think about how uncomfortable it is for those children to leave it you know the children, these children are sold yeah. five to ten times a day. And, you know, one of the biggest, this is one of the biggest problem of the world today, child trafficking. But you know what's another big problem? Is good people knowing about it and doing nothing about it. That's yes. also a massive problem. Mm -hmm. And that to me, you know, there's two kinds of films, the ones that I want to make and the ones that I'm called to make. This is a film that I was called to make. I didn't want, I didn't wake up one day and say, I'm going to make a movie about child trafficking. It was actually the opposite. I was watching a news uh, report on TV. I think it was 20, 20 or 60 minutes. And it was a very short piece. It was like a 15 minute piece on child trafficking for the sex trades. And I was blown away. I, I could not believe that I didn't know about this. And that was it. Once I knew, I knew I had to do something about it. And the next thing, the next thing you know, I'm writing a fiction story on this. Not even a true story, just fiction. And I get a phone call one day uh, asking me if I know Tim Ballard. This phone call came from the producer of the film, Eduardo Verastigui. And he said, do you know who Tim Ballard is? I say, no. He says, well, Google him and call me back. And that was it. I, the minute I saw his story, I realized, oh, wow, this is a true story that is better than fiction. And, and it's basically... Thing. And it's based on Tim, who, of course, um, had real life experience with this. He has Operation Underground Railroad, which he still has going on today. My understanding is that he actually wanted Jim Caviezel to play him because he saw him in The Count of Monte Cristo and he liked what his character was and how he played that character. So he's specifically requested, even though they don't really look alike, that Jim play his play himself. Yeah, and that, that was a funny story because he called me one day and he's like, I want Jim Caviezel 
to uh, to play me. And for me, it, this is very, you know, superficial. But the first thing in my head, I was like, well, but he's not blonde. You know, you're blonde. Somebody has to play. You know, for me, I, I want it because this is based on a true story. I want somebody to look exactly like him. But to my surprise, you know, when I met Jim and I understood that he had a deeper connection to this story, for him, this movie was personal because he himself had already rescued children himself. So this was very close to home for him. And his conviction to dive in into this was it surpassed any other acting uh, roles that he had done. So I asked him, if before we move forward, do you mind if we just dye your hair blonde just to see uh, what happens? And to my surprise, this was crazy. When he was blonde and I put him next to him, like they were like put him back to back and I was like, wow, you guys look like almost identical to the point that, uh, you know, in one part of the movie, we have a picture of Tim Ballard and a picture of Jim Caviezel and they, they blend. <laughs> and I had to make one of the pictures black and white because when they were in color, the audience were not realizing that their faces has changed. That's how, the, how much the resemblance happens once we, we switch the the hair so it was completely you know i, I do feel this is a movie of to you that yeah, we're called and i realized that i thought i was the only one called no <laughs> everybody that we were coming back part of this film they felt called as well all the way from the investors to jim caviezel to all the actors and wow. this point to our distributors you know to our to our partners that are putting this movie out there so this is definitely a a a, a film that it's it's working as, as as a tool to awaken people to this issue, you know, to create awareness. Because change cannot happen without awareness. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, Jim said this is the second most important film he's ever done, you know, next to The Passion, of course. So it was a very yeah, important sure. project for him. I know you guys got a lot of resistance from Hollywood when you were first trying to get this distributed and get it out. I mean, you had really actually kind of a battle to get this movie even out there after it was made, didn't you? Yes, yes. But the timing is perfect right now because I'm not going to lie, I was very frustrated in the beginning complaining and uh, just very frustrated. But if the movie would have come out when we were intended to come out, I don't think the awareness that we have today on child trafficking at that point before people were not, we were not, there was not this talk. Like people are aware of this issue. If we would have come out in a time when no one was aware of this issue, it will be very hard for audiences to come want to see the film. Mm -hmm. So the timing is perfect. And also, we want to have partnered with such a great partners. You know, it's if we were to partner with a, distribu a distributor that our movie was just one more movie, they would not have given the attention that Angel Studios is giving. You know, mm -hmm. they're really, really, you know, putting the attention that a film like this, they're nurturing it. This is a movie that has to be yeah. handled with so much care and love in order to do, to do this. That's why so important that people come see it the first week because if we don't hit the numbers on the first week we're, we're we'll get kicked out we're kicked out of the party and if we want to stay mm -hmm. and create this movie to become a movement we got to stay in, on theaters at least longer than a week absolutely and also because of the border situation it has really raised a lot of attention about trafficking and child trafficking even more so like you said in the last year with what's going on with our border and child trafficking so even more so now people are more in tune i agree and I, from what i can tell when isaac and i've been looking at social media you you've got a lot of people supporting this yeah. movie and wanting to show up yeah yeah and you know we think we always think that this is a problem that happens somewhere else but I invite everybody, I did it myself, just to put online how many children go missing in the United States a year. I was surprised by the number. And I don't want to quote the number because all numbers are different, but no, there was not a low number. There were, all the numbers were different, but on the high level, like the highest level you can imagine. So this is a, a, a problem that is happening, could be happening in the corner, right, right in front of our eyes. So it is it is it is it, it is it is a film that 
will we'll create awareness. And I, I, I like to make movies that propose a theme. So this is not a movie that is going to impose anything on anybody. It's a movie that proposes what's happening out there. And we can curse the darkness all day long, or we can quietly light a candle. And that that that's what this film intends. I like to make movies that begin when the movie ends. When you leave, I like to leave audiences in a state of reflection. When the movie ends, in a state of reflection, always with hope. Because without hope, then we're finished. And that's another point, is this has a, a relatively happy ending. It does have a good ending. People are not going to walk out of there depressed. Like you said, they'll be very aware of the situation. Yeah. But you still can walk out feeling, okay, good. You know, it has a good ending. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And that's, oh. that's very important because... Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. That was very important. Go ahead. No, no, no. It's it's very important because that's the main goal is to to let people inspire. And and I always people ask me right after they finish the film now because we finished the film a long time ago. We didn't stop screening it, so we screened the film all around the nation. And the reactions, I was very surprised the reaction on teenagers. I mean, very surprised. But everybody automatically were were, were going into a state of. What can I do? What can I do? And my my short answer was, talk about it. That's it. Hmm. Talk about it. You never know by bringing this conversation into, you know, into the foreground. You don't know how it's going to hit somebody else. And you know, a film like this, you know, that's why it's so important that people come to see it because yeah. we're competing against films that have hundreds of millions of dollars. And for us, people watching the film, they're becoming our walking billboards you know we don't have the money to put those big billboards right. on every corner but we do have a film that if people spread the word that because they become walking billboards and the main important thing is that the first week they come to see it so they can go spread the word you cannot spread the word on something you haven't seen and i i, mm -hmm. I feel very confident that when people see the film they will they will they will be moved to spread the message yeah. Now, Absolutely. obviously, this this is not a movie for little children. It's, it's not a movie that maybe you would take your five, six year old, but it certainly is a movie that you can take a good mature teenager, right? Yes, yes. The movie is PG-13. Mm -hmm. So uh, I have a 15 year old daughter and I waited until she was 15. You know, she, we finished the movie when she was 13 and I, I actually just saw it for the first time on the premiere. First time she ever saw it was at the premiere. Uh, we just got back from the premiere uh, yesterday. So, you know, I, for me, a good age as a parent, but everybody, you know, at the movie's PG-13, so it's safe, 13 and up. I decided to wait for my daughter until she was 15. Uh, sure. Just just for her to be able to to digest it better. Mm -hmm. Well, that's but a good mark then for other parents. Is great, yeah. Yeah, that's a yeah. good mark for other parents then. What you did with your own child, your own teenager. Yeah. That's kind of yeah. great, you know, love mark for other parents to do. I like the fact that you're coming out on July 4th, Independence Day, Freedom. And this movie is about freeing children and, yeah. you know, freedom for these poor children, male and female. It's not just girls. I mean, that's what's yeah. in your story. This is for, you know, both children. So, I mean, male and female. So I just love that that's the underlying message. Yeah. Yeah, and, and if you think about it, what do we do on the 4th of July? We celebrate freedom. But we can also honor freedom by going to support a film like this. So it, 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 it's another way to, to, to celebrate by honoring it and, 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 and support the freedom of children that are trapped all around the world. It's, it's kind of, after you see this kind of movie and you're saying everyone wants to be involved, how can they be involved? Where can people go to find out how they can be involved, Alejandro? Yeah, so Angel Studios, our distributor, uh, they, they built a whole path into how people can get involved into the film. So if they go to angels, uh, angelstudios.com, and there, there's many different ways. Uh, there's ways that you can pre-buy tickets for others. Uh, to create that movement, because that's the goal is to make this this movie and mm -hmm. to start to start a movement on on, on creating awareness. But again, um, it is a very entertaining film as well. You know, it's not yes. a film that this is not a movie that you're going to sit down, you're going to be preached at. You know, I'm a filmmaker. 
and I like to make, I love cinema and the magic of cinema. It's just like food. You know, I, I do believe that, you know, you, you go eat and if the food is amazing, even though if it's good for you, if it tastes incredible, that's a way better experience. And that's, that's what we do in here. It's, it's, it's to create yeah. great yeah. films so people can, can digest. I, I agree. Now, you're not just a director and a writer. You actually had a part in the movie, didn't you? No, no, no. Eduardo did. Eduardo. Oh, Eduardo, who's the producer. Eduardo did. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah. That's yeah. right. Oh, yeah. See, I, I'm already giving you, maybe I, you should try it. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I always try. I always write a little uh -huh. part for me, and then I check it out. <laughs> because I get so so in my head, and I always oh, end up giving my role to somebody. <laughs> it's always a small role, a line or two. Sure. And I've never made yeah. it. Every time, every movie, I'm in my short film. Alfred Hitchcock did that all the time. I to get it. Yeah, Alfred yeah. Hitchcock will always I'm, write I'm himself a, into just a little tiny piece. <laughs> yeah, I may do it on this. I, I start an, another movie, uh, God willing, in, in, in September. And I, I, hopefully I can make do that it. one. Do it. But I, I have another you, film. Can you give us a sneak yeah, of what, what that could be, your other well, film? Well, I, have, I finished another movie uh, that you will be able to see in the theaters uh, when you go see Sound of Freedom, it's the first trailer before Sound of Freedom. So you'll, oh. you'll see the trailer in there, but it's, it's, it's also a powerful story about a, uh, mm -hmm. a woman that revolutionized America. And she was the first American saint, but she built an empire of hope. Uh, but an empire is big mm -hmm. as the Rockefellers and the Vanderbilt's. But this was an empire oh. of hope, empire to help others, especially mm -hmm. children. And she came. She came here in the late 1800s, and and uh, just was like a, a disruptor. I mean, in a times where woman had no voice, she had the biggest voice you can imagine. And she's she's a, a very inspiring character. It's the ultimate underdog story, and uh, just just very excited about that film. And the one I'm starting in 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 uh, in September. It's it's also a powerful story about a woman, the most famous woman in the history of Earth. Uh, this is a story in the life of Mary, but in uh, uh, a Mary that is very active. Uh, it focuses on on the slaughter of the innocents and um, the struggles that she had to go through to endure the, those times. Well, that's great. Now, before we before we end this interview, before we say goodbye, I know we're talking about Sound of Freedom. We're promoting this movie. But uh, my wife and I like to watch, you know, older movies because some of the stuff that uh, comes out now is just is so bad for us. And so we were looking for a movie, and I already knew I was gonna we were gonna interview you, but we saw this movie called Little Boy. We're like, hey, that sounds good. We go it and, and put that movie on, and of course, then I see your name on. It. I'm like, oh my goodness, we're gonna interview him here shortly. Uh, but I just want to encourage people to find that movie, and that movie is Little Boy. That was a great movie alejandro we really we just absolutely loved it thank you thank you so much I, I i that movie you know i love that movie so much it's very close to my heart and unfortunately nobody saw it um because of you know well, it, it had a, a a a terrible marketing behind terrible distribution and you know it it, it, it was labeled and nobody got to see it but now i'm finding out that Thanks to this new movie and my other movie, mm -hmm. people are going back and started to to watch Little Boy, and and that that makes me very happy that you were watching it without even knowing. And 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 uh, it's 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 honey, honey, honey to my ears. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you, and please recommend it to everybody. It's, it's a, I, 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 you know, everybody after they see Sound of Freedom, go, go see Cabrini and then go see, go see it. Go see it. It was terrific. <laughs> well, we, uh, you know, we uh, certainly uh, are just so thrilled to have had you on the on the show here. I would love to do a Spanish interview with you, by the way. Uh, Holly's back. We had lost her there for a second. Let me bring her back in. And uh, there. We're Sorry, welcome back, Holly. <laughs> <laughs> I got kicked what's, off. <laughs> what's, what's, it, what's it something I, I said? <laughs> it must be happening to everyone today. I don't know. I'm so sorry. Well, what I, what I wanted to say was, I know, Alejandro, your birthday's coming up. So what a great birthday present for you if this film is a yes. success in July. you got a July birthday. And, yeah. 
And we are just so happy to promote this for you, and we will do it. And blessings to you. And we want to encourage our audience to pray for this movie. Mm -hmm. Pray for Alejandro. Pray for Jim. Pray for Tim Ballard. I mean, pray for the people that are involved, because this is more than just entertainment. This is actually, like he said, a movement, a message. And it's important that we get this out, because the enemy... You just look at our culture today. Everything in our culture is fighting this story. Everything in our culture is against this story. Yeah. And it's getting more and more flagrant every day. So this is a battle. This is a war. And this is a great tool to get someone, like he said, it has a happy ending. Yeah, it's intense, but it's it's worth it. This is, this is a, t- it will touch your heart. It will touch your spirit. I'm telling you, as a parent and, and, a, and a grandparent, um, this is an important movie. So we, we ask you as an audience to please support it. Yeah. And thank you. Thank you so much. We need all the support. This is a film that is not going to survive with that. The audience and all of you support. So thank you. And you bet. please come, come see the film. We will. Yeah. And we want to see your other ones too. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Little Boy is one of my favorites. I'm just going to say it again. I I just love that movie. And as a family film critic, I've always recommended it. Isaac and I have recommended it, you know, for family films, for people to watch. It's just that, you know, so folks, if you want to see another good movie that he's directed, go see Little Boy. It's really good. You can look at it on streaming services right now. It's an amazing film. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you very much. Thank you. God bless you. We'll be right back. Thank you. Sound of Freedom is one of those films that can legitimately change this world. So we want to ignite a fire in audiences and open their eyes to the dark reality of millions of children that need our help. Let's make this film a historic event and the start of the end of child trafficking. Theaters across this country are already selling out. Pre-order your tickets today and you can send the message that God's children are no longer for sale. Wasn't that powerful, Isaac? Oh, what a great interview. You know, I love the fact that he brought up the PG-13 age appropriateness, even for his own children Mm -hmm. who knew he had made this movie. Um, I love how he talked about how we can support it. And I also love the fact that, folks, July 4th, okay, whether you're seeing this after the 4th of July or not, this is a movie that celebrates freedom, like we said. And it's an important movie about freedom. And I think what better way than to be talking about it the week of July 4th and after. Yes, and if you want to support this film, and you better support this film, uh, just go to uh, angel.com, and there you'll find everything about the movie. You'll find out how to get tickets. Uh, Angel.com. Just go there today and get ready to be just blown away by a a wonderful movie. We can promise that. Yep. We We love that. We can promise you it's a good movie. Absolutely. Well, that's it for today, Holly. Thanks, Isaac. God bless everyone. Bye bye now. Write to us at faithonfilmtv at gmail.com. That's faithonfilmtv at gmail.com. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at faithonfilmtv. Also, go to our YouTube channel, Faith on Film TV, and hit the subscribe button and the bell for notifications on our latest Faith on Film shows.